give us a very good lecture. Okay, thank you very much. Hi. Hey, if I use the microphone, is it better, or if I just speak, can everybody hear me? Yeah. Everybody can hear me? Yeah. It's more natural this way, isn't it? Hey, so maybe I'm going to just put this one down. So uh, one first correction. Sorry, Professor. Hackerspace is actually not a company. Uh, it started as a community, but now we are actually a Taiwanese non-profit organization uh, since two weeks ago or so. Uh, so actually, it's a... It's a much more complex issue than, uh, than just be, uh, being a company, but it's a, that's a good, a good place to start. And so, um, Professor introduced me, me quite well. I started in, uh, in Hungary a little bit, um, studied physics, um, studied physics abroad, then moved, to, uh, moved over here and started to take part in a, a lot, of, um, lot of different projects. And one of the things that was closer to my heart is, uh, uh, is the lab work I was doing inside the lab uh, that, that involved a lot of hardware making, working on hardware and software uh, things. And I thought that uh, it would be so nice to, to have something outside of work, something like that. So before we go any further, uh, hands up, who knows what's a hacker space is? OK, not a single hat. So I'm not going to ask. My next question would have been that who have been to a hacker space, but uh, then it's not useful. A hackerspace, in very brief terms, is a community lab. It's a community workshop that you can go there and work on whatever you want, whatever uh, is your interest. And basically, that's what I'm going to try to, to show you today, that whole wide range of things you can go and do in a hackerspace. So, I don't know whether if you can turn up, turn up the light here a little bit in the front so maybe people can see the, the uh, slides a little bit better, maybe. I don't I know. Think that's the idea, yeah. know but who knows, who knows where it is? The light. Then maybe. Oh, maybe I can go. Sorry. is not really the core of a hacker space. So these kind of things happen <laughs> yeah, every now and again. So th this picture I choose because I wanted to illustrate what a hacker space is in one picture, which is very difficult, is that's my friend Simon there. He just got his, uh, he just got his uh, uh, better monitoring, uh, wireless weather monitoring setup that he wanted to take to a farm. And he set it up to, to figure out that, uh, that how does it work. Uh, on one of our tables while Claire there in the back is working on some, some other project uh, there. And behind uh, in this room, some other people are working on another project. So, so we have tables, we have computers, we have tools, we have space, we have people. It's a workshop. You do everything that you can imagine there. Uh, and what kind of things we can imagine there is uh, crazy. So that was one hacker space. Actually, hackerspace per se is different everywhere, and everywhere means hundreds and hundreds of places. So in Europe, that's about 200 different hackerspaces. Just in the US, is almost another 200 uh, that calls a hackerspace. In Africa, there's, I would say, about 20. There's another 10 in India. Uh, Asia, you have another 30 or so. And this is, this is just basically a fraction of the places that actually exist and put themselves online. And besides this, there's a lot of extra place that just do their things. Because the hacker space philosophy is just do the things. Being on the internet is good. It's nice to have. But the most important is the things that you are making there. And partly, I think that's why, that's why I'm here, because that is a very, very productive and uh, beneficial and positive philosophy to have. And hopefully, you know, I can tell you a little bit how does it look like in practice. Um, so we started a little bit less than two years ago. The way it happened is that it was only me and no space and nothing, just an idea that I wanted to work on things, especially electronics, 
electronics because I really like building electronics. Uh, that that is outside of work. That is not tied to to my everyday everyday job. And uh, there's a website which collects all the hacker spaces. So I put there that there's type a hacker space <coughs> in preparation. It doesn't exist yet, but we have a Facebook page. So it's, it can count as a preparation now. And one of one other guy who from the U.S. His name is Tom. Just moved here to Taiwan at that time. And he looked up the page. He went to hackerspaces elsewhere, looked at the page, and, uh, and sent me an email. Hey, hey, Greg, so how's the hackerspace going? And I said, it's, well, it's me and you now. So it, basically, we sit down and started to talk that maybe you should do something here and that kickstart the whole thing. And that was before Chinese New Year. It was two weeks before Chinese New Year. And he was new here. He doesn't know that Chinese New Year, everything is empty. So we wanted to do something, but I told him that, well, it's either do it before the Chinese New Year, and I laughed, or you wait another two or three weeks and do it afterwards. And uh, to my surprise, he said, well, then just do it beforehand. So we have two weeks to prepare something that would get people in and get excited about this idea of hackerspace that was never really heard in Taipei. It's a new idea. Like, there's a room full of people who never heard of hackerspaces until I started to talk. Yeah. What happened is two weeks later, this is the Google office. He worked at Google, and uh, uh, they gave us their room uh, to use for an afternoon or actually an entire day. And we had 100 people from all around Taiwan come in. Many people come from the countryside as well, come in to check this one out. In two weeks, we will barely be able to do any promotion or not. But they came in, and we were working on stuff. They were doing electronics. They were doing clothes hacking. They were doing 3D printing. They were, they were talking over the internet with other hackerspaces in the US who were introducing the people who were doing the first hackerspaces in the US checked in with us and had a chat with us over the internet. And it was an amazing start. There's still another space. This, this is a, just, just a temporary thing. So this was a very good start to get the people who are most interested in it together and form a group that can actually create that workshop, the physical space. There's the hacker space, which is the people, and there's the hacker space where your hammer is, where's your ladder is, where the, where's your soldering guy, the physical space that you need. And two people cannot do that. But, but this many people can. So we came together and looked for a space to rent in Taipei City, which uh, which we found not not far from the Taipei main station. The main station is somewhere here, Longshan Station. This is the, uh, the MRT line, and it is a very very nice area. This is one of the old areas of town. One one very beneficial thing that we found later that this street here, just next to us, this street here is every tool that you can ever imagine, every plastics, metals. Uh, uh, fabric, uh, wood, um, everything that you need to make something. The electronics, toys, everything is there. So in a hackerspace, you need uh, it's a workshop. See, a workshop. You need something. What do you do? Just go out on the street ten minutes back, and you have what you needed, what you didn't have in the space. It's a uh, it's a drill. You can get that one. If it's a piece of plastic, you can uh, you can get that one as well. So it's a very, very good place uh, that, we, uh, that we find with, uh, with them together. And this was this picture was taken uh, almost two years <coughs> ago when we were setting up for the first time. And this is how it started. It's a big empty room, right? But this empty room is so full of possibilities that now we can barely sit down. <laughs> There's so many things inside there. Hopefully that I have some pictures in there. But this, this is one room. We have another room in the back, we have another kitchen, we have a rooftop, and all these places, all these areas are up for the community to make something in there. It's, uh, because that's, that's, the, uh, that's the idea, that if you provide the tools to people, and that you can see everywhere in the world, if you provide the tools to the people, the opportunity and the space, 
then they will make amazing things that's gonna surprise everybody out right there. I try to think of if, there, uh, if there's any guiding principle that we have before we, uh, we dig into uh, this any deeper. And um, not as a founder, but being a member of the hacker space for about two years now, these are the things that I kind of co uh, come up with is these three things, more or less. Give or take a couple more. Uh, everybody has their own ideas. But don't, don't worry. These, these are not something to memorize. This is something to think about only. The first one is one person's stupid is the other person's genius. Meaning that just because something looks really stupid to you, it might not be actually stupid. It might be a very, very good thing for somebody else. And it might be very interesting for somebody else. So when we are working on something, nobody ever says that, oh, stop doing that. This, this makes no sense. Or, or, or why are you doing it? That's, that's just ridiculous. I, can, I, I don't even know what to say. That doesn't work that way. And what would you say if somebody tells you that? And hopefully, everybody's a maker in the hackerspace, so hopefully you're going to make something that other people are going to say, this is very really stupid. That's actually an accomplishment and they don't understand what you are making. So when others are creating something, you keep an open mind. Try to understand why are they doing that. It's not just because it looks ridiculous. Uh, but what are they making? Second one is do things and tell people. Do things is important because if you don't do anything, you're never really going to get anywhere. The second part is really important because if you create something, and nobody knows about it, it's only good for you. If you make something here, it stays at your table, it's not gonna say, help, only you're gonna help you, which is, which is fine, which is fine. But if you stand up and tell everybody that, hey, I, I made something new, and uh, somebody from the back is gonna say, that, that sounds interesting, tell me more about it, I, I wanna do that one as well. It's very, very powerful. In the last two years, even more, before, before I um, was taking part in the organized hacking as the hacker spaces, even before that, uh, I started to write a blog that uh, includes many projects that I made in a very, very detailed way, that all the steps, these are the materials I need, these are the programs I made for that, these are the steps I took, these are the problems, these were the solutions, these are the problems I couldn't solve, like that. And for this couple of years, I think I got <coughs> easily half a dozen emails from around the world that, hey, Greg, uh, I've seen what you were doing there. We were trying to do the same thing. Can you help us fix it? Uh, because we don't understand. Here's this, here's, this, uh, here's this device that we want to connect to, but, uh, but uh, we don't understand. We want the same thing. We want, really want to make this uh, make this vending machine that we want to put it outside of uh, in Indonesia to uh, to uh, rural areas to do certain things, but we need this part to work to that accept, can accept money. We don't know how does it work, but you already made it. Can you help us? That's an actual thing that happened, and we can feedback. We talked. Somebody said that hey, I have seen the program that you wrote for for this. Uh, research software that we use in uh, Academia Sinica, for example, we were using uh, in our laboratory. And, uh, and somebody wrote back that, oh, it's really cool. I want to I wanna really know, know it. Thanks for sharing with us, because this is the first time I've seen that it actually works. So if you do things, you become richer. If you tell people, everybody else around you become richer, and you as well. Reputation, accomplishment, empowerment. Very, it's a very, very simple idea, but very few people who do things they are actually tell people. Most of it, well, not just not because they don't want to, but because they don't really think about that, or or it's too much time to write it up or things like that. But I can attest to it that it's really worth telling people your accomplishments that you are really proud and excited about. And the last one is. Everything is harder and easier in the same time than most people think. Usually the hard parts 
are not the hard parts that we think. The easy parts are not the easy parts that we think. Uh, hacker spaces uh, as well, and every project that we, that we do there, the, uh, the difficulties are always unexpected. So it's good to prepare, at least uh, from, from that side, that things are going to get harder than you think, and uh, some things are easy. <coughs> so I was talking a lot with generalities. I think it's good. To, it's very much time. It's been 15 minutes, so I would I should better get to this, uh, the <coughs> specific things that we were making, so I can I can show you that I have something to actually tell you, not just coming here out and then talking about everything. So here's the first one. I bring up 3D printing because this is the one that uh, that most people usually ask for the first time when they come to the hackerspace itself. Because 3D printing is very famous in these days now. Mm -hmm. like, who heard about 3D printing here? Oh, yeah, that's about half the people. It's much more than about hackerspaces. 3D printing is really revolutionizing uh, a lot of things around the world. And this is uh, this this print actually. This one is a failed one. This actually, the machine was probably working for easily for 12 hours to, to do this, and then it failed. It couldn't finish it. And there are a couple of different things. Uh, some people were making, uh, I think these must be some toys. This is a model of, uh, of an animal's uh, skull. One of our, one of our uh, main members is a veterinarian, and he does a lot of interesting things. He will come up later with some important uh, stuff. He was making an animal skull to, for modeling things that, uh, a little bit, some other toys and tools. Uh, 3D printing is interesting because uh, it is, it is relatively easy to get started with, but it's really, really difficult to make good quality stuff. It does, 3D printing sounds like a, it's an amazing good idea, but when you actually get there, okay, so what do I want to print? Most people usually don't have an idea. I, I myself am guilty of this one as well. I have a 3D printer, and my 3D printer was the first one in the hackerspace because I, I really wanted one at that time. And I don't think I printed anything for easily six months, because mine is much worse than this one. This is one of our other members who shared it with everybody else. And so mine is like, okay, what should I do? Ooh, it takes a long time. Hmm, maybe I'll figure it out tomorrow. And in the meantime, other people come up with, with very genius ideas to, to enhance their lives and, and uh, do something really fun. They, they made a lot of fun things. And uh, it creates people with specialties in the group. So if I want to use a 3D printer, I know exactly which guy I have to talk to. It's a difficult thing. It's learnable. I can go and learn it myself. He shared the machine with us. Everybody can use it. And I can also call to him that, hey, I really want to do this. Can you help me? Because, uh, because I think uh, if I'm going to print it out, it's going to be really, really bad quality. It's very easy to print bad quality stuff. It's quite hard to print good quality stuff. Um, by the way, this 3D printer, which you only see a part of it here, uh, it's, it's basically the inside part. Uh, this is a Chinese clone of an American printer that was designed in a New York hackerspace originally. So the, the idea for, for this printer was created inside the hackerspace. The people were making it there. And then it was very successful. And it needed more space, so they take it outside and they started a company, a MakerBot, uh, which uh, which is a big name in that <coughs> industry. And now they have Chinese clones of it, which are like half the price, kind of that good. But uh, yeah, and it's very very powerful and enables a lot of, a lot of interesting things. And we are just checking the surface. By the way, if anybody has questions in the meantime, just shoot anytime. Um, this is the story for this picture is the following. I have a I have a friend who was also working who was also working in the Taiwanese academia. He's also a foreigner like me. Um, I think he's he's from the U.S. He stopped working for uh, for his research organization this year as well, and um, uh, he's just checking things out, learning. He's doing his gap year. He's taking his gap year figuring out what am I doing with my life. 
And well, one day I was in a hackerspace just doing my, minding my own business, and he came in unexpectedly, and he was saying, hey, great. I, I brought one of these because I really want to use them, and I don't know how to use them. Can you help me figure out? What, what do I know about it? This is the first time I've seen it. But there were a couple of, uh, couple of other ones in the uh, space that we could use. These are actually two little radios that the left one can go to the right one, and actually you can have a network of them in a way that they can talk to each other uh, and they can extend the network over a large distance. And not every radio maybe see each other, but all of them can talk to each other. It's called a mesh network. And we sit down, starting from nothing, looked up online the documentation, put, uh, put together a little bit what he remembered, and what, what the, te uh, the techs were telling him in the shop when he was actually buying these things. And two hours later, when he was going home, the whole thing was working. The whole thing was working. And it's only, it, I wasn't really helping much, I was just there trying to figure out. Okay, maybe I was, I was helping a little bit. I pull on my experience in the laboratory, how things, certain things worked, uh, that, uh, that I know from, from experience with other equipment, and we could make it work. So the lesson from uh, this picture, not lesson, the story from this picture is people love to talk to each other and figure out new things, even when they start from nothing. You can get to, you can get to really far. And that's what the, that's what the two of them are doing as well. Uh, he's he's a Finn guy, Finnish guy who was visiting uh, Taiwan for a couple of months, and he's also doing his electronics company, a uh, electronics sourcing, working with China, uh, working with Europe, and he had an idea to make something new, make a new product for his company, not for his clients there. And uh, my friend on the, the left, he's. Uh, he's a programmer, and he's a very, very curious guy uh, from Turkey. He moved to Taiwan as, uh, Taiwan as well, and they just sit down and discussing that how could they, how could they make it work? They just uh, uh, kind of the, the right to just telling the idea uh, to him that how does it work? Maybe he's interested. It looks like he's interested to, uh, to me. Maybe he can give some feedback. It's basically that you can tell your idea to other people if you have an idea. That I want to. Uh, I, I want to make a new piece of jewelry, for example. I want to make a, a new kind of watch. I want to. Uh, I want to make a case for a phone. I want to. I want to make anything. There's always somebody you can you can bounce off ideas. That you like. Hey, do you have a minute? Uh, can we talk about it? What do you think about this? Something that I'm making. That's very powerful. Feedback is so rare. If you go outside. Very few people dare to actually go. How many of you would dare to go out in a Dante or Starbucks or any of the coffee places with your idea, with your website, with your, with your uh, article, with your book, and sit down and, hey, can you take a look at it for me? Like, uh, uh, sorry to bother you, I see you are drinking your coffee, but do you mind if uh, you look at it? This is actually a very, very powerful idea. And it works very well, but it's also very difficult. So one thing is less difficult, but almost as valuable, is to do the same thing with friends. And that's what a hackerspace is. You never bother anybody if you go in, a, uh, go in the community that, hey, hey guys, I, I need something. Can you check it out? And that's when you are a person or when, uh, when you are on Facebook, just send, uh, send a message to, uh, to the group that, Hey, I was, uh, I was working on this thing, and can you check it out? What do you think? Or uh, emails. So feedback makes everything better, no matter what. Um, we really, really ra like creators who come there. And Alex, the guy here in the red, he's, um, he's making guitar effect pedals. So it's basically you plug in your electric guitar, it has a little pedal. It has some kind of effect on it that it changes the sound of the guitar to make it make it fun in a certain way. And he makes those boxes. 
it's it's all electronic but all different every box does a different effect maybe maybe you do echo maybe you do uh, distortion that it sounds very harsh and strong and powerful exactly the things that you want to want to show like maybe you feel really a a angry about stuff maybe you, you really feel uh, feel happy about stuff and you want to make it show in your music and yeah, you can plug on your uh, the pedal uh, if you're a musician and you play it with that one and he's making those pedals and he comes to the hackerspace where they cash out some ideas this is this is one of our wall turning to a black wall I see you guys have the same thing it's really it's really awesome and uh, and people can draw the ideas there and they see that they actually make it he does this almost every month probably sometimes even even more often and a lot of people come and make these pedals, learn about these pedals, how do they work, how does it, how does it actually make an effect, what does it mean that creating an effect like an electron, so what is it, I personally don't know yet, he knows it, he knows it much more, and there's a lot of people who come in to listen to him, to work with him, and the interesting thing is that that a lot of people don't really come for a hackerspace, they come for, to his workshop. But if they are there, maybe later they will do some workshops, hopefully. That's the, that's, that's the wish and hope we are having, that get a lot of people in who maybe see the benefits. You sit down at the table and you see that, oh, there's so much more here. Maybe I should come here to do, do my stuff. And they, they can show other people uh, things as well. Maybe that will happen. That would be a good thing. Or if they just come for the workshops and then they go home and they come next month, that's a good thing as well. So it's a win-win situation. We really can provide the tools, that really the needs that the people have. For example, he needs a space. Here you go. We have a space. Um, we also take part in uh, communities outside of the hackerspace of it. Uh, so this is a, the Maker Fair is, um, is probably the biggest maker event, maker or hacker or creator or DIY event in, in almost every country around the world. Uh, it started by uh, Make Magazine, which in the US is, is, is spreading this culture. And now here in Taiwan as well, I bring a copy and I have a reason why I brought it. I will tell you later on. Uh, but uh, if you look at it, there's a, that's, that's the place where you can read about the things that other people make. You remember? Do things and tell people. That's the magazine. It's telling people what other people make. And Maker Fair is the place where you actually show what you make. So this was, this was this year's event. These, these little boxes, these are all different companies showing their stuff. There's a lot of activity going around in Taiwan. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of people realizing that how much people like to create. And uh, they come there to exhibit, to inspire, to, to take part. And here, this big, big box here, uh, that one was the community spaces area. And we had, we had a tiny little space here in the corner pure native fly, so we had the tightness little corner in there. But it worked out beautifully, for a certain definition of beautifully. Uh, a lot of people came, a lot of people were interested, uh, started a lot of conversation. You meet, uh, meet a lot of kids and grown-ups who are really inspired by things. Uh, kids pulling on their parents that, hey, mom, can I check this place out? Or parents pulling on a kid that, hey, check this one out. You, you can see both of it. And the reason I bring it uh, up because it's really important if there's, a, if there's an ecosystem, be part of it. A social, as the original title of the talk we was saying, is not, social is not just community. Social is on a higher level. Maybe within a city or within a country or within the country. You, you, can, you can check the different levels. And we were really happy that we uh, we are part of this internal community here in Taipei and Taiwan, other places that do similar work. And the community can really, really bring people together. This is, uh, this is one of, 
our get together when we were planning our nonprofit association applications. You know, this is an official process. Taiwan is not really famous for easy bureaucracy. Here, everything is complicated. And it's also in Chinese. I don't know anybody has a problem here with, uh, with the uh, illegal Chinese. I think all of our members, even when they speak Chinese, they have problem with legal, uh, legal language. But we came together, and together we figured it out. Some people were translating. Some people were interpreting that what can that mean. Some people were trying to come up with uh, ideas that how we can adapt it to our case. And I loved it. I love this time because a lot of people who don't normally come came in for this, that they really want to help the community to take this thing seriously. The nonprofit organization is a very serious thing. Like you, you suddenly have responsibilities, uh, you know, which I'm not sure we are completely prepared for, but we are trying. So here a cause bring people together, and that is where that is very useful and powerful, like finding a good cause to bring, it, bring people together. There's no age limit either. Uh, this little boy, uh, Ege, he's actually younger than a hacker space. Uh, and he's been there probably more often than more, most of our members. <laughs> and usually he just wanted to eat something, what he's not supposed to. Uh, I think he entered that phase when he is a, uh, he wants to break things that he's not supposed to, which is a little bit better. Breaking things is still better than, than eating them. So uh, we really don't have don't have an age limit uh, because there should be one, not in the bottom, not in the not in the top. And how does it work out? And on this picture, we we are doing a little workshop. Uh, we uh, something called little bits that I'm gonna uh, show in the moment that. It shows you how to use electronics. Now, here, the story of this picture that our expert shows how to use this to our member. <laughs> exactly. She was the expert there. She was the one that started it earlier. And they're talking about this, how to make it better. And uh, these little bits, I brought one in here so that we can uh, try out a, uh, a little bit. It's um, it's a US company who's making these little kits that makes learning about electronics much easier. To show you how easy it is, uh, okay, here's a, here's a bit that is, uh, that is battery. Yeah, here's a, here's a battery here. Uh, here's a little piece. Uh, okay, let me, I think I just attach a button to it. Oh yeah, okay, here's a button. And here's something, and I press the button. Uh, oh, let me, magnets are not strong enough. <laughs> and I need to concentrate. <laughs> oh, okay. This way. It makes it so that it can't be attached in the wrong direction. Which means, okay. You suddenly have a circuit that you can already use for something. There's a button and there's a buzzer. You're already doing something with it. And there's much more pieces that you can, that you can use for that and you create different stuff. Okay, I don't want to do a buzzer. I want to do, uh, so I already look into the light. Okay, now you didn't forget everything. It's not men in black, but, uh, but basically it's, basically it's uh, like that. You take the pieces, you replace it, you move it around. Maybe I want to do it both. Light and the buzzer. And so we had an event where we were playing with these pieces and the kids were knowing this so much more than any of the grown-ups who've been there. One thing about uh, uh, this, uh, besides the workshop itself, that the event was actually sponsored by one of, one of these US websites called Instructables. Who, who have heard of Instructables? Yeah. OK, nobody. That's a, that's also a website which does the do things tell people. Instructables is a place where you can go and put a step-by-step -step instruction to how to make something. And that something can be anything. How to bake bread, like your mom used to do. That's totally fit on Instructables. 
if you want to, to tell people how to print a t-shirt, you can put that on the instructables. If you want to know how to change the tire of a bicycle, I'm pretty sure you can find it on instructable. So that's a place where you can go and learn about what everybody else is doing. And a lot of people in our hackerspace use that one very much. It's like, I, I, I want to do I want to do something. Maybe I just want, I want to collect the, the, the rainwater at the hackerspace rooftop. Uh, how, what would be a good, play, a good way to, to actually do that? You can go to Instructables and find a, find a way that how people collected the rainwater and maybe, maybe there's something for it. Now, one of the initiatives is that they want to encourage people to make things. So they work together with hackerspaces because that's where the makers are, right? That's where the makers are. So every month, they partner with some, uh, some company and they enlist some hackerspaces around the world. Those hackerspaces get something in the mail. They, they do a hack night, a build night, and they make something and they put it on Instructables to, for everybody to show. And this one was one of, the, one of our time. It was, I think it was like easily, easily a 500 US dollars worth of equipment just shipped in so you can, you can do something with it. It's a very, very generous way because people know that hackerspaces create so much more value than, than $500 worth of hardware. And uh, I'm going to come back to, to this one a little bit when I show you one of the other build guides. But uh, if there's no age limit, there's really no age limit. This, these four of them, um, these two guys' mom was telling me earlier this summer that, hey, Greg, can we, can we do something to, for kids to learn about computers? Maybe they can do, maybe they, they can do an event where they, they learn how to build a computer. How to build a computer. OK. OK, let's do this. Let's do this. So we get together in a Sunday mor a Saturday morning, and we sit down. And they didn't really look like people who wanted to build computers, but they really looked like people who would want to take apart computers. Again, destroying is easier than making, but we had somebody donated to us like three old laptops that were not really usable anymore. Um, they looked exactly my laptop, so I had to, to, to be very careful that I don't give them mine by accident. <laughs> uh, so we give them these three laptops and no instructions whatsoever, just tell them that you take it apart, see what's inside there. And to our biggest surprise, she was the best one at it. She finished earlier uh, than, than all the guys, figured out everything when she finished. She was telling her mom, but, uh, she was uh, sending, uh, telling me later in the email uh, that oh, Nico was telling me that I'm going to go and tell it to my, all my girlfriends in the class that uh, how cool is what's inside the computer. And uh, I don't know whether that happened. According to their mom, uh, she's much more hacking type than all their classmates. But it's really not an age limit, not a gender limit. There's no limit whatsoever. The two guys were fooling around a little bit because they are friends. They want to impress each other a little bit. And, and he, Alex's son, who was here with the guitar effects pedal, if you remember him, that's, uh, that's his son. He was doing uh, another stuff. He was, uh, uh, he was building a different, uh, different system, a different part of the difference. Uh, things. So they were really excited. All of them have computers at home. And when they open it up, and we take out one part, it's like, okay, so guys, what is this? How should we know? What is, what is this? This is a memory. Oh, really? That's what it looks like? Okay, so what is this? Well, I have no idea. This is a hard drive. This is a CPU. Uh, this is a wireless card. And they were like, oh my god, I'm using this every day. So this is how it looks. You don't really take apart your computers most of the time at home. Usually, usually, here you can go and take it apart, although the end result is usually this. This one, this one sits in a bucket somewhere, somewhere in a hackerspace. We should figure out a way to recycle it very well, because uh, not really useful for anything, but, uh, but it was fun, fun to see. That was the end result. Some memory, a keyboard, uh, the motherboard, and everything. Some pieces of plastics, 
So this is what they left behind after they left, very satisfied and felt like they learned something. And since then, they came back quite a few times. So you guys are studying abroad, right? How do you keep in touch with your families, with your friends back at home? Skype, Skype or with the internet? But, yeah, whatever is possible, whatever is possible. And this is one, one thing that we are trying. Uh, some, of our, um, some of our members already went abroad, like Tom smiling in the middle a little bit. He, he's, a, he's the co-founder I mentioned in the beginning. Uh, I worked together with He is, he's then moved on to Japan. Other members are currently in France or in the US. But we want to keep in touch with them. So, so we learn a lot more about how to keep teams together remotely. Not everybody can be, can be in the same place at the same time, but you can keep talking to them. So like here we are using Google Plus, but just, just because that, that was handy. But uh, we do a lot of like, remote communication. When there was the Hackerspace birthday in March, there was a, we set up a computer there, and everybody could sit, uh, sit there on the couch and talk to the people who were in, in France or, uh, or, or in US or Japan. And, uh, bring them a little cake and then teach them that he ate them. But uh, <laughs> it's another thing. They had beer. And so it's fine. Um, if you make a place which, which enables creativity, you will find that people really use that one and make things that are going to surprise you. Um, from, uh, from a display, we got a couple of these old little chairs. This is like small little, little kid's chair. This is, a, this is just for display, not really to sit on. And maybe, maybe kids can sit on, but uh, I, don't, I wouldn't recommend, not very stable. So it's just a display chair. And one of them was broken, probably actually sit on by someone. And it was about to be thrown out. But one day I came into the space and what we had there, here's a, here's a tool rack that looks Strikingly similar to this this one here, somebody took one of these chairs and turned it into a tool rack because that's what we need. We don't need, uh, we could have thrown it out, recycle it, or use it. Some of the things like these ones are not very useful for uh, for anything at the moment, but you would be surprised what else you can make with the things that are lying around. Not every trash is valuable, but a lot of trash is. And this is, uh, this is our other, uh, scratching my head here a little bit. This one was our other creativity piece. Somebody brought just two big pieces of these uh, styrofoam bowls and just put it down around Christmas. And I was saying that, okay, let somebody, uh, let, let everybody decorate it any way you like it. Every time you came to the hackerspace, Miss Hackerspace was looking different. Sometimes it was having uh, glasses, sometimes it was actually a boy, sometimes it was a girl. The big eye, nobody even knows why we have a big in the hackerspace. But we have. <laughs> uh, there's a t shirt that somebody made uh, for him uh, or her uh, with a hackerspace logo on it and put some rivets on it. And the nose is coming from somewhere else. I think I think I was I'm responsible for the eyelashes uh, or eyebrow. Not very nice. <laughs> I, I feel embarrassed. There are other other things people done. But this is this is the fun side of things. It's it might look stupid or might be genius. Okay. Um, some of the things are not just about creation but learning as well. Learning, for example, how to deal with a community. If you have a community like us that there's not normally leaders, that the leaders are the ones that actually get the things done. So it's, a, it's I'm not leader because I say I'm a, I'm a leader. I'm, I'm a leader because I'm the one that took out the trash. So here, here is the case of like how you make something that then to make people take responsibility for their thing. That's, that's absolutely essential. If you have a community place, people have to take responsibility for that place. If you just come there, they're like, okay, I'm just gonna play here. You don't really 
think, uh, you don't think that this is your place, this is a place where I do stuff, then you're going to take much less care of it. So for example, poor electronics, because nobody turned them off, they run out of battery. Okay, and that's, a, that's another 40 NT per device, and sometimes I can only use it once, because next time, two weeks later, I come back, it's again out of battery. It's not nice. So that's one of the lessons we are learning, that how to, how to make the community function. And this is a very difficult thing, but it's a very practical, a uh, very good thing to, to learn along these lines. Now, we are also doing things that are not necessarily material, but something about people's thinking. This, uh, this one was one event, uh, I think almost a year ago, when we, invite, uh, we invited a couple of lawyers who are very uh, experienced and uh, outspoken in the area of things like Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies that are really important now uh, for, for many region, uh, many things. Like they, they're really upsetting the, how the financial systems work. They enable a lot of people to be their own banks. And we invited them to come to the hackerspace and talk about that. What is the legal environment? of cryptocurrencies? What is the legal environment of Bitcoin? What is the legal environment of, of uh, for example, doing remittances that you don't have to rely on Western Union and uh, there's no borders, there's no banks, there's no uh, fees, it's all technology. How does it work? Is it legal, is it not? What is, uh, what is yes, what is no, what is black and what is white, what is gray? And we had a full house for this. People were very interested in learning about new technologies and, and uh, new technologies that are changing our lives around here. And uh, I felt like Hackerspace was a, was a really good place to, to do that. And I really hope that we can do uh, more of the things that. But I didn't put this picture there because I'm on there. It's unfortunate. I, I, I was standing there in the, to, to, uh, next to the door because I had to run down if somebody rings, let them in. So it's, it's a, I'm actually not in the center. I'm, I'm, I'm the servant on the side. <laughs> uh, or we're checking out other people's innovations. Uh, this is a little piece of uh, solar panel from Kickstarter. It's, a, it's called Pocket Solar Factory. Like I, I signed up for it to, to a long time ago. And it basically would be a very, very cheap way to bring solar power anywhere. So it's like, if you need solar power here, you manufacture the things here. If you want to make it a certain way, for example, I only have this much space, where I have this much space, you can, you can make it the way, uh, the way you want it to. It's, uh, it gives a lot of, uh, the idea would be energy freedom to, to, to everywhere in Earth. And uh, that was their vision, Kickstarter. And I got one of their kits and tried out. It, I messed it up a little bit, that's why I broke up pieces, but it's, it was a lot of, a lot of fun to actually make something like that. And, and uh, people did something, tell us about it, and then you could try it out as well and see whether it works or not. Or uh, urban farming. Uh, Simon, in the very, very first picture, who was checking out uh, uh, his uh, farm environment monitoring uh, system, he was doing that in a space a little bit. He had a little farm there. This is, this is an egg container that he drilled some little holes in in the bottom so the water can and uh, he set it up in a way to, uh, to, to grow certain, I, I think this was a growing cabbage maybe, I'm not totally sure. And he did that in the hackerspace uh, inside, in the balcony, in the, in the rooftop a little bit. And he learned so much that later on, he went to China to be a consultant in one of the farms to help them figure out how to grow things better. It's a completely countryside. There's no internet. There's no the, the nearest town is like an hour uh, hour ride uh, in the in the car. And two months later, when he came back, and uh, uh, the first thing he was sell, uh, saying, uh, like I asked him, so uh, Simon, I haven't seen you for two months. How is it going in the in, in the farm in China? He was saying, well, now we just don't know where to st sell all the stuff that we are growing. He, he learned so much with a hands-on experimentation, that he could go and teach the full-time farmers how to do things as good that they don't know what to do with it anymore. Um, or you can do everyday things. 
a little bit better. Um, I'm from Hungary. I'm really proud of our uh, Hungarian wine here. And uh, brought some back. But it's not really good if you stand them up. Because uh, because the, uh, because then the the cork can uh, can break and the whole whole wine is ruined. It's not it's not good. I'm not gonna drink it now. I wanna say, keep it for some special occasion. But I wanna keep it uh, in a way that it, it works. For it has to be horizontal. If I just put it down, it rolls away. And I don't wanna really buy all this metal stuff. No, uh, none none of none of the wine holders are really my size. I have a very tiny room. Probably everybody here in Taipei has a very tiny room. So just make one from cardboard. Like take the size, uh, do some do some edge, and, and make something useful immediately. Instead of throwing the cardboard out, make something useful around the house. Or make some art. This one was part of our instructable uh, build night as well. This is a, a so-called electroluminescent wire. This is a, a that pink pink thing in the middle. That uh, that wire, if you if you plug into a, to some power, then uh, then it lights up. It's very simple. But you can make really interesting things with it. For example, here my friend Eli was making art. Uh, there is, this is one of the first movies ever made, uh, that Double Pink Horse. It's very famous. It was, it was to, to uh, these couple of guys in the US who were trying to figure out the bet whether the horse ever runs, if the horse ever runs in a way that none of the hoops actually touched the ground. Nobody knew. Because before they ever movies, nobody, nobody was quick enough to see it. Like, OK, it says, how, how's the horse running? You have to make a movie to see how it works. And it's very iconic. So he, wanted, uh, he decided, I'm going to make a little art project with this one, that there's my horse. Uh, it lights up it lights up at the night. So uh, this, is, this is how it looks. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I should, really shouldn't have said that. <laughs> But it, it looks like that. It's very simple and also very fun. And, and I think it's very artistic. And in a way, this also got into us, it got us into the Instructables feature list. Here we are, the weekly feature. And th this one was ours as well. Uh, a hack. Um, a sign that was reacting to sound. Uh, you play music and the, the sign was blinking as for the music. And, and, uh, and, uh, and I, yeah, it was, it was fun to make. It doesn't make much, much sense when I explain it. But uh, it's, it's good. Again, every week they have the, the email that how to do different things. Like uh, how to build a wall in your room. It's very handy, right? Uh, how to make chocolate truffles. Uh, how to make an iPad stand. Whatever people like. And. Uh, these instructable things is very helpful. Like for example, uh, like the next one we're gonna have in about two weeks or three weeks time. We have this. Who who have seen something like this before? Anybody knows that we, what this might be? So uh, this is a this is a so-called Google Cardboard, which is a virtual reality glasses that you take your cell phone. It has an app on it. You plug it in here. It has some lenses. Uh, it has space for the camera that you, that you can uh, look out, and then you can you can do virtual reality uh, applications for it. And when I get this one originally, they, they already sent this, uh, this to us. Like I have ten of these. I opened just one. The other nine is for, for everybody else in the hackerspace to open it. I just want needed to try it out and see how it works. And I could have a tour of the uh, of one of the castles in France. And it sounds silly, and I tried it, and it was amazing. It's like, oh, wow. Like, uh, you have a tour guide that says that if you look to the left, and this picture, and this is the king's mother, this and this, and I was like, okay, what? Oh, wow. 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 I was sitting in bed, and I was like, okay, okay, wait, wait, okay, here's a wall. Let's go around so I can look around. It's, a, it's very interesting and also very challenging. This is a very fun tool. What we can make on a hackathon with it, I have absolutely no idea yet. That's why we want to get people in, because maybe somebody has other idea than me. No, hopefully people have other idea than me. And then combining each of our knowledge, we can make something, uh, something cool. 
So people are very generous to places that provides value, and they can see they provide value. So for example, this is a picture. One of, one of our friends is a technology journalist. And other companies give them a lot of things. They give them, give them a lot of things to test out. And uh, many of them, they don't, know, don't really know what to do with it later on. So they just give it to us. Like They were saying, that, hey, Greg, uh, I don't really have time to use all of these. And I just give it to you, and maybe you can figure out the fun of it. A little computer, electronics prototyping board, little computer. This is a USB stick, which is an entire computer. This is a scanner. This is, uh, this is something similar to the Kinect that, uh, that you can interact with the computer without touching anything. It just follows you, it uh, looks what, uh, follows your gestures and everything. And you cannot really buy it online. You cannot buy it. They just, uh, this is developer samples that you can just get and, uh, and use and figure out how you can use it. I think we'll use that one for, for in the hackerspace to do 3D scanning. So you can print a model out. Like uh, here, I want to print a model of this microphone. I put it on a stand, turn it around, have the camera, scans it in 3D, put it together. I have a model, I can print it out. This, this kind of things. So, so a lot of people are very generous. If they know what they do, it's going to help a lot of people. So uh, it's good to know. And we also have a lot of visitors. It's incredible that how many people from hackerspaces travel around the world and if you have a hackerspace member that goes to another another city, another country, they got to go to the place, to the hackerspace of that place in there. So anytime I had people coming over to in Japan, I'm just on vacation, I just wanted to check out whether there's a hackerspace here. Hey, I'm over from Hong Kong for the weekend. I wanted to jump in. Uh, jump in. Oh, I, I'm traveling to all hackerspaces in Asia. I want to, to interview you a little bit to see how people are doing here. Visitors are coming from everywhere. And this is amazing to open up your world to all kinds of different world views. That uh, he, uh, Ahmed, he's um, from New Zealand. He came to visit for a couple of weeks uh, to Taiwan. And, uh, and he was working on a little project. This, uh, this one is a line of lights that is controlled by a little computer. And when you move, and it's blinking. And if you move it on the picture, it's going to look like it's a word. It's something. It's saying something. It's a so-called persistence of vision. Sometimes you see it in storefronts that there is these blinking lights that spell out a word. Uh, where there you have something you have to move very quickly. It's very fun. Very simple project. That he tried for the first time, and it worked. And it showed to people. It was amazing. I, I I'm so sad I wasn't there at that time. But uh, since then he went back to, uh, to New Zealand and doing a lot of educational things there, uh, helping people learn how to program, which one is very beneficial. Or sometimes you might just want to learn some skills, like how to ride a unicycle. I, I don't think Tom really hurt himself. I think he's, uh, he survived. It's, it's fun. Or one of the things I found myself really, really enjoying in a hackerspace is fixing things. How many stuff you have that are broken around your house? I have a lot, a lot of things, a lot of things to, uh, that, uh, that's broken. For example, one of my headphones was broken by the end. And I didn't want to buy a new one because I like that one. So let's, let's, let's try and fix it. So I went there, figured it out, figured out how the cables are, took some pictures. This is one in the series. Uh, wrote in the blog that how, does it, uh, how did I do it. And, and I show it people. And then, yeah, testing it with young cat. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's a that's a very fun music. You know, it's, it's so, um, or sometimes, sometimes it's fun to do something uh, very timely. Uh, in a way, for example, at the uh, at the World Cup, we were doing one of our. So this is the, the football notifier. A little bit. Uh, so, uh, uh, so this is what was for the World Cup. That the computer was listening to when their goals were in the football. And if one, one side win, it just flips, uh, flips the flag and uh, brings the line that there was a goal. Yeah. So, it, so it's, it's a very fun, it's a very little fun project. But 
I'm showing people how does it build. It's a very simple parts. It's really creative, and it's amazing. Uh, like uh, people who come up with ideas uh, like this is just always just blow, blows my blows my mind that we could have, we could we made it basically. This is within two hours, and that evening uh, we just had that we were running the back while while doing something else because it was too late to actually watch the game. And I said, oh yeah, oh yeah, German is cool. Oh yeah. <laughs> and that game, it wasn't turned on, and we couldn't have slept. Yeah. Um, so it, doing something timely is, uh, is, is always a very good way to tap into a bigger group of people. It's, a, it's more interesting. And this is actually, uh, this is another uh, timely project. Here in the front, to the, you cannot see very well on the side, probably you can see it a little bit better. Um, that this little doggy has something here on the leg. It's um, this doggy is I think his name is Quack Quack. <laughs> uh, uh, he or she lived in the NTU campus just next door. And one day when uh, when was just sunbathing, a really crazy dog attacked him and uh, bite his leg. Let's call it him. Uh, bite his leg until. Uh, until somebody ca uh, could uh, could scare the dog away, and uh, the people did scare the dog away. But uh, and uh, the veterinary in the hospital took the dog in, operated on the leg. But they figured out that oh, the dog couldn't really walk on the leg anymore. Uh, what can we do? Can we do some reconstruction? A little bit. Can we help this little dog? In? And in a couple of weeks' projects, they designed. An extra part that the dog can wear, and it learned to walk again. So basically, they gave a new life to the uh, to this little dog that they can go in and do interesting things. And it was a cooperation between some members of the hackerspace, a design studio, and the veterinary hospital at uh, the NTU. And it really shows how. Causes bring people together, good causes bring people together. And people are really creative when they want to solve something that they really feel important. So this actually was news around the world uh, in Maker Circles and even beyond that, that they made it. The, the video of it, the, the, the ducky walking again, uh, was on quite a few websites and it's, it's amazing. And if you think about it, it doesn't just have to be a duck. Right? It can be a human as well. And that actually really happens. One of my uh, university university mate, he, he was there uh, back, in, back home in Hungary at my university a couple of years later than me. But we have some common friends, so I can say that I know him a little bit. He just wrote a book about the future of medicine. And he's exploring a lot of things that what kind of uh, new things are coming into medicine. And one of the things is uh, that you can, there are stories that he was sh uh, sharing that how people who made, made in hackerspaces or working on something maybe like a Halloween claws, that like to scare people, to have the big claw. And again, you can, can send the scary guys around on Halloween that like scare kids and, uh, and get some candy and things like that. And there are people who've seen it, uh, seen the video that, that somebody can make really, really good uh, uh, good this kind of clause, and he was, uh, they sent him an email that he, I'm actually, I'm actually a kid who born with no fingers or deformed fingers. I don't remember exactly. And can you help me? What you made is really fun. Can you help me to make it also useful? And uh, they collaborated together, 3D printed uh, prototypes. Uh, other companies donated them 3D printers and the materials and support and knowledge and, and like that. And I think it wasn't it wasn't six months that the kid finally had actually a hand first in his life because of somebody made something and told people about it. And that happens a lot of uh, a lot of times. These kind of skills going around 3D printing, changing a lot of things. And I don't even have to go into the uh, really high technology end users of all these technologies. That's great. 
that's great that the big hospitals are can using it, that the, the research institute can use it. But the most important is that the hacker spaces are the places where people develop those skills that we can attack real life problems that happen right now in the communities. They have the opportunity to, to speak to those people. So it's, I find it absolutely fascinating and I find it so uh, challenging that I feel that I didn't contribute enough really useful things yet. That's, that's a good thing to have. Okay. So uh, the reason why I brought in a Make Magazine, uh, I, I was really happy that we were featured in there a little bit uh, earlier this year in Chinese, uh, when they had a collection of uh, Taiwanese hackerspaces and makerspaces uh, featured and showing what people can do. So not just learn the magazine, but actually go, and not, not just read the magazine, but go there and do things. And we also have fun. This was, this was I think, Mid-Autumn Festival. Is that, that, that the time when people were doing a barbecue, right? Uh, some go here. Uh, yeah, so that's, what, that's our rooftop. We, we gathered there, we were talking with people. Uh, the girl on the left is a visitor. Other people uh, yeah, just, just dropped in uh, from other places. And, and some people just only spent one or two days in Taiwan. And they came in and they spent the evening with us, eating barbecue and talking about everything that came up. Uh, some making, some things around the world, everything. It's, it's amazing to be part of this community and, uh, and enabling this community. So, we are not the only one here in Taipei, or in Taiwan either. There are a couple of other places. Uh, there are two travelers, Maker Bar, Fan Cafe, Open Lab. They're all similar organizations. The travelers are usually companies. They started from MIT with the purpose of providing equipment that people can use. So they have much higher end equipment than we have. And we have, uh, we have other stuff. They have other stuff. It's different. It's complementary. Uh, Maker Bar is more for the community and telling people about uh, that keep doing things. <coughs> the Fab Coffee is a, is a, uh, at Huashan Park, and uh, you can actually go there and use a 3D printer or a 3D uh, or 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 woodcutter machine, and you can make really interesting things there. I recommend you check it out. Open Lab uh, is a mostly art project. They did a lot of amazing stuff. Um, working with other makers and artists. It's here actually not too, far, uh, not too far in the Treasure Hill Artist Village, just at the riverside here. And we also have a lot of friends abroad as well. Uh, here in the middle, the, the red one is Noise Bridge, uh, a maker space in San Francisco in California. And that's one of the oldest one, and the one that we modeled our hacker space on a little bit. Um, and also nearby there's Tokyo Hackerspace, Dim Sum Labs in, is in Hong Kong. And the other two I put on, uh, put on there because it's, it's even more complementary things. Hive Bio is a hackerspace that is uh, specializing in biology. Biology, research, experimentation, and making. They actually they're they focusing on some particular area. So it's, they are not necessarily a, a complete hacker space, but they are focusing on very important particular thing they, they are really, really interested in. And they can do a lot of interesting work with that one. For example, how to use that microscope that you can 3D print and you put it on your smartphone and you can have a better microscope than most of the microscope you can go, go out and buy there. And you can see bacteria or you can see as things you can do interesting labs with that, but teach people how to do that, or everything. Uh, learning about science is very, very powerful. Tech shop, we don't have one in Taiwan, but in Europe and in America it's very popular. It's, it's a big workshop, and the purpose is that provide every possible tool that you can imagine, mostly the big ones, and they teach you how to do this, so you can make absolutely anything. Absolutely anything. People's, people started a lot of different projects there, from autonomous vehicles, so like cars that drive themselves, to uh, uh, iPad cases uh, made out of bamboo. They learned the book binding and other things in the tech shop. It's a very, very powerful and interesting model that you don't have in Taiwan, and it would be, it would be great to have. It's, it's expanding even more 
uh, on this model, although that one is more commercial. That's, that's really, really a company there. But, so finish, uh, finish up, a uh, lot of companies are coming out actually from ideas that people do in hacker spaces. The uh, reason why I'm wearing this t-shirt is uh, I'm gonna be shameless about it, like I'm trying to do a laboratory, a laboratory ins instrument maker company, it's like a DIY physics instruments company, and I'm doing it in a hackerspace to, to create the things that, uh, that I need, doing the electronics there, doing the, the casing, talking to people to learn more about the things I, I need, to do, uh, need to do, and other people can do that as well. If you have an idea, a lot of things came out of the communities that are uh, in other spaces, so you're very welcome to, uh, to visit, uh, visit us when there's something, we try to be open as much as possible. Mostly, we, we are open in the evenings, but hopefully it will be better in the, in the future. We have, a, we have some calendars that maybe we have events uh, and like that, so yeah, that's, that's nice. So thanks very much for your attention, and if you have any questions, just let me know. Thank you.